the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our sermon, our last sermon in our stewardship series, is recorded in 1 Chronicles. We read in the 22nd chapter, the 19th verse. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that will be built for the name of the Lord. This is God's Word. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dearly loved by God. We chose these words of David as the foundation for gathering our funds to build. We are about halfway through the three-year commitment period. You, God's people, have been most generous. Our building is going up. Our funding for our building is going up. What is imminently more important, however, than funds and buildings are minds and hearts. We chose, on the basis of these words, as a theme for our commitments, building devoted hearts for Jesus. More important than funding and building our hearts that are obedient to God, that worship God, and that serve our God. This is something that King David also recognized. And so when he set about gathering the funds to build the temple in Jerusalem, he wanted to remind the people and commanded them to think of that word of God that they had, to think of the sacrifices that they offered that prefigured the coming of the Messiah. David knew that it is in the sanctuary of God that devotion to God is nurtured. And it is in the sanctuary of God that they would build that after their hearts were nurtured, that they would continue to build the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord. The people knew that it was there in the sanctuary before the altar that their devotion would grow. They knew that they would grow in that devotion in that temple. There, the name of the Lord would be their rock and their salvation. We will conclude our series of stewardships stewardship this morning as we look back on that theme, building devoted hearts for Jesus. And we'll see as we hear again these words of David that it is the Holy Spirit who builds those devoted hearts in the sanctuary and that with hearts ever more devoted to Jesus that we will build for the name of the Lord. It's nothing new building sanctuaries and altars to the name of the Lord. One of the very first things Noah did after he came out of the ark, Noah built an altar to the Lord, and he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Between the cities of Bethel and Ai, Abraham built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. God told Moses when the children of Israel were traveling through the desert to build a sanctuary, to build a tabernacle with an altar out in front of it. That would be the place where 
His presence would dwell among the people. That would be the place where He would meet them and they would meet Him. King David had built an altar earlier in Jerusalem. And there He sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the name of the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar and burnt offerings. Our spiritual ancestors recognized that it is in the sanctuary before the altar that we build devoted hearts for Jesus. Because the altar and the sanctuary is that place where God dwells. This sanctuary is where God meets us every week, every time we worship. It's where we meet God. And not just because He fills all things (coughs) with His presence, but He is present with us in the Word and Sacrament, with that gospel of the cross and empty tomb. Our God dwells here in this sanctuary, at this altar. And here it is that we gather to be with Him, to hear His Word, to baptize our babies, to receive the Lord's Supper, the true body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins. As we do all those things in this place, The Holy Spirit builds devoted hearts for Jesus. The Holy Spirit called you and me out of unbelief into faith so that He could call us out of our daily routines to come together in the sanctuary of the Lord. To call us together before the altar at the font, before this ambo or pulpit from which the Word of God flows out as that river of grace. Here in this sanctuary is that gospel of forgiveness that builds devoted hearts for Jesus, our gracious God. Here it is that you and I confess our many sins, even the sins that we do not know. Here is the place where we receive the absolution for those sins, that forgiveness in Christ's blood. It is that forgiveness in this sanctuary, before this altar, where the Holy Spirit builds our hearts, makes our hearts more and more devoted to our Savior who loved us and gave Himself up for us on the cross. It is in this sanctuary that you and I carry out our stewardship of God's Word. It is in this sanctuary that we carry out our stewardship of confession and worship and praise and thanksgiving that we offer all before our God. Certainly, it is true that we build, or the Holy Spirit builds, devoted hearts for Jesus, ever more devoted hearts for Jesus, through our daily Bible reading. The Holy Spirit strengthens and builds our devotion to Jesus Christ in our daily family devotions, in whatever form that may take. But yet, God calls us together. The word church means to be called out, to come together and to assemble. And it is in the sanctuary. It is before the altar that we do this. King David recognized and called on that kind of devotion to be the engine that would drive the building of the first temple in Jerusalem. 
Here was the place where the people would gather at the sanctuary before the altar. They would hear God's word, especially the promise of their Savior who was to come. There they would offer their sacrifices and the priests would offer sacrifices for them, all pointing ahead to that perfect Lamb of God, that perfect sacrifice who would offer up his life on the cross. It was with such a devoted heart for Jesus, for the coming Jesus, that King David called on the leaders of Israel to gather together the materials to build the temple. Literally tons and tons of gold and silver and other valuable things. But then David asked the leaders in Israel to follow Solomon, his son. Remember, David was a man of war and God would not let him build his temple. And so he gave that task to Solomon, David's son. And so David asked the leaders and called on the leaders to follow Solomon in the building of the temple. But David didn't ask the leaders to be devoted to Solomon. He asked the leaders to be devoted to the Lord their God. To give God their hearts. And when God had their hearts, then he would have everything else. It was with such a devoted heart that David knew that by building the temple as God commanded him to do, that when the people gathered there with devoted hearts, that that devotion for Christ in the promise would grow and grow as they worshiped and as the priests offered their sacrifices. And that would all be done, David said, for the name of the Lord. This new addition that we're building, this new sanctuary particularly, we are not building for us. We are not building it to put our name on it. We are building it for the name of the Lord. We are putting His name on it. Remember from Catechism, what do we mean by the name of the Lord? Everything by which we call Him, God with us, Savior, Redeemer, Lord Christ, Father, Almighty God, And God's name is his reputation. This addition, like this sanctuary, is not to stand our reputation in the community. It is the place where God's reputation stands in the community. His reputation as a just and loving God. His reputation that when we or our guests come into this sanctuary, or God willing, into the new sanctuary, that the judgment of the law will tear down our selfish pride and justification by grace will build up our faith in Jesus Christ as our only Savior. It is from the sanctuary. It is from the altar, the baptismal font, from the pulpit, that the reputation of God as a just and merciful God who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, a God who so loved you, He loved you by sending His own Son to the cross, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is why we have this sanctuary and are building another. For the Lord, your God. And David realized that it is in that sanctuary that the kingdom of God 
would grow. David had his son Solomon build the building. That building would stand for a while. There's only one wall left of the temple in Jerusalem. But what David was really going to build there was the kingdom of God. What David was going to really build there was the eternal kingdom of his descendant, Jesus Christ, whom God promised in all, in whom all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That sanctuary was for the sacred articles. God told David to tell Solomon, bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that will be built for the name of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, the candle stands, the incense stands, the altar that would be placed out in front of the temple. All of these sacred articles meant for those people the presence and the mercy of their God. In the future, God willing, we will transfer our sacred articles into our new sanctuary. The altar, the pulpit, and the baptismal font. We will continue to worship in that new sanctuary as those sacred articles, again, with the cross, remind us of the mercy of our God. All of you are sitting there this morning, and all of you are looking towards the altar. All of you are looking towards the pulpit. Next Sunday, if we have the baptism that's been scheduled, the baptismal font will be up here, or you all hopefully looked at it when you came in. When we look at those sacred articles, it means God's mercy. It means God's forgiveness. When we see our Lenten cross and our logo cross that we plan to have right in the front of church and engraved into all of our pew ends, those will all remind us of what the sanctuary is for. It is where the Holy Spirit builds devoted hearts for Jesus. We are building a sanctuary to build devoted hearts. In that sanctuary, God will give us the gospel so that we not only have devoted hearts for Jesus, but we continue to build devoted hearts for Jesus. It is my prayer... And I trust that it is your prayer, too, that you will continue to be generous in your material and spiritual sacrifices with devoted hearts for Jesus when we enter our new sanctuary. Because there, through the Word, we will continue to build the kingdom of God by the power of the Holy Spirit even after the building of concrete and steel is completed. Amen.